I'm John Gray. I'm a printmaker based at Ushore in County Durham. Um, I've been making my etchings now for about seven years. I make these by first acid etching a metal plate like this one and then using this to print images on, onto paper. All of my etchings are original hand printed rather than reproductions so individual prints do vary a bit depending on how I've inked and printed them. They're also all limited edition because of the, um, the limited life of these plates. Much of my work is inspired by the landscape and architecture of the North East and many of the eye etchings feature Northumberland castles. My earlier work um, had quite a hard um, graphic look to it, I think, like this etching of Bambra. Um, but over the last few years I've been um, developing a more impressionistic style in much of my work, trying to capture something of the atmosphere of, of the places that I feature. Um, this is the more recent etching of Bambra, which uses a range of techniques to produce a softer, um, more subtle and I hope more atmospheric image. There are two stages really to making prints. Um, firstly making the brass plate and then using this to print onto paper. So the first step is to polish a brass plate um, with fine sandpaper. And then I use um, what's called an aquatint box to lay a fine dusting of powdered rosin onto the plate. Um, I melt this onto the plate. Um, what this does is um, it lays down a very fine texture of, of ro melted rosin particles which protect, partially protect the plate from acid. And so when I etch it, the acid only bites in those areas between the, the particles of rosin giving a rough texture which um, collects the ink. So that technique's called aquatinting. Okay, having prepared the plate like that, um, I next protect parts of the surface using um, either varnish or wax. And I do this in stages, so the parts of the plate that I cover with, with varnish or wax at the start um, won't be affected by the acid, so they'll stay um, white in the final print. But I do this in, in, in stages, so I'll, I'll put it in acid for a bit, take it out, dry it, um, you block out a bit more of the plate, back into the acid again, and so on, to give myself a range of tones. Sometimes I'll dip the plate in acid to etch it, so in this case I'll block out parts of the image and also put um, tape on the back of the plate so that the back of the plate is protected from the acid and I'll dip the whole plate in acid for, for differing lengths of time. If I want more variation in tones I'll sometimes paint the acid onto the plate rather than dipping it. Um, painting it on gives um, a greater variety of tones because the acid's in contact with the plate for, for different times though it is a little bit harder to control the process. I often repeat this process um, for different parts of the plate, cleaning the wax and rosin off the plate and then going back laying down the rosin again and working on other areas. With some plates, before aqua tinting, I paint the whole plate with varnish and then draw lines onto the plate with a needle and then etch the plate in acid. Um, and what that does is see where I've drawn with a needle, those bits of the plate are etched to produce lines in the final print. So sometimes that's a useful way of getting fine detail before I start etching um, larger areas using the aquatint process. Another technique I sometimes use uh, before aquatinting is sugar lift. Here I paint the image onto the plate using a dark coloured sugar solution. Once that's dried I varnish over that, let it dry again, and then by immersing the whole thing in hot water um, the sugar dissolves away and takes away the varnish that's painted on top of it. Um, and I'm left with bare metal in those areas, which I can then aquatint and etch in the normal way. And that, that allows me to, to get quite detailed dark areas into a plate if I want. It's possible to um, put the sugar lift on using quite a fine pen. Once a plate is, um, is complete, um, I ink it with an oil-based ink. And once I've spread the ink over the plate, I first of all 
um, wipe it in with um, an inky rag and then slowly wipe away the ink so that I'm taking away the ink from the areas where there's no or very little etching, leaving it in the rougher areas or in the lines that I've etched. Once I've wiped off all the excess ink, um, I can transfer the image onto a piece of um, damp paper in, um, in my press. And then finally, I, I leave the prints to dry for several days between um, sheets of tissue and weighted boards so that they, they dry nice and flat.